This is not your grandfather's America's Cup. Everything about this venerable boat competition has changed from the all new boat designs to the high tech tracking and broadcasting. Plus, I got the ride of my lifetime on one of those catamarans. I spent the day with the crew of Team Korea. Because it sounds like I'm not going for a pleasure cruise. Like this is a full on little mini training run here. Don't tell anybody, but I took a little drama me. I mean, did you see that boat? Korea's White Tiger Challenger is one of 10 teams descending upon San Francisco right now, hoping to battle tech titan and reigning champion Oracle for the 2013 America's Cup. Basically, stay on the high side and keep one hand or two hands on that red handle. Okay. I feel awesome. <laughs> this is the best day ever. We are on our way out to the America's Cup catamaran of Team Korea. I know there's a lot of tech on this boat, but for the next couple hours, I'm just going to think about holding on. Thank you. Perch on the back there. This is where I sit. Just right here. Let me sit right here. See you on the other side. While training, we hooked up with Italy's Luna Rossa Piranha and challenged them to a match race. Just doing a little racing. For all the excitement, speed, and drama of racing these boats, this year the technology is actually unbelievably advanced. I caught up with Team Korea's former skipper, Olympic gold medalist Nathan Outeridge, to talk about the tech. Normally um, for racing, for sailing, like it's just a human eye looking at it and you know making a judgment, whereas we've got all the computers on the boat, they have uh, boundaries for the course, so when you're sailing you have a little computer screen next to where I'm sitting, it tells you distance to the next boundary, it tells you, you know what the course is going to be. So the communication is just so much better than what you would have for any other event. The tech is tied to a TV broadcasting system called LiveLine. They've got to make sure they get across in front of New Zealand here, otherwise... Uh... Which was developed by Stan Honey, America's Cup's director of technology. We take stuff that's important to the sport, like the lay lines, the mark locations, the limits to the course, the advantage lines, and then we make it visible on the TV screen by rendering those lines on the water. The camera's on a helicopter, so we have to measure the helicopter's position to a couple of centimeters and its orientation to a hundredth of a degree, and that's the part that's really hard. And then the helicopter is communicating with GPS systems on the boat? The helicopters, the mark boats, and the race boats all measure their position very accurately, and they all communicate to shore. And then at shore in the TV compound, we take the video from the helicopter, and then we superimpose the graphics on top using all of those measurements. Those augmented reality graphics show things like the start and finish line and the position of the racers, which as a result makes it a lot easier to follow on television. They've also integrated LiveLine into a mobile app Looking for the best current. that lets you watch and listen to a 3D live animated view of the races. Still, nothing compares to watching these boats race live in the water.
They're a very powerful boat and they're very light. They're probably only about 1.2 tonne, so they're pretty light. And the amount of power you can get from that wing is massive. Normally, a boat will have like a carbon fibre mast and then they'll have a soft sail. And they've gone for like a wing design here, so it's basically a two-piece wing that hinges in the middle. And we can control the power from that a lot more efficiently than most boats. And it seems very similar to an airplane wing design. Like you guys are like half pilot, half sailors yeah. out here. It's, it's very much like an airplane wing. You can can change the camber to get more power and then when it gets really windy like today you, you decrease the camber in it and you can also adjust how much twist is in it so if you let the twist in the top of the wing hang out you can also decrease the amount of power and improve your speed through the water. Today they're racing the 45 footers. Next year at the Cup the teams will move to 72 foot catamarans. Well, as you can see, that's a, that's a 45, so it's just a baby boat compared to what the cup's going to be in. This is a baby boat. It's just a baby boat. Uh, they're pretty quick, but you know we do 30 knots in these things, and the 72s are probably going to do around 40 knots. So and, they'll uh, be cruising along at 40 knots, basically out of the water, just like kind of skiing? That's, that's the plan. That's the way the design's been going, and the rules are allowing people to design it that way. So what we had today was one hull flying. You know, in the cup, I'll expect to see two hulls out of the water. Most of the events we've been to have been very light winds and uh, we've been here in San Francisco and it's known to be windy and we're out there pushing it doing 30 knots and we had a little capsize and uh, when you capsize you destroy a lot of the boat so uh, I expect that's going to happen a lot this week. I'm pretty glad just for the record that that didn't happen today. No, we, we said we'd look after you and you know we did our job. I appreciate that. I just thought when they said they'd look after her they meant the boat. <laughs> <laughs>